Hello and welcome to the first Spinetics sales power-up session. Thanks for joining today. My name's George Preston. We're going to be going through three recent success stories on Spinetics, beginning with one right here where I'm based in Houston, Texas for Houston Community College, and then looking at one for Moss Adams, an accounting firm out of Seattle, and then an expansion to an existing project for Olympus, the technology company. So let's get started. Houston Community College approached their local integrator, who are a Spinetics certified dealer, for a new custom-shaped video wall in one of their new buildings called the West Houston Institute. And the original proposal was a single source being fed into this uh, custom-shaped video wall uh, and then split via a controller from another manufacturer called Datapath. And what we wanted to do was upsell this into a Spinetics only project using Spinetics to do uh, the splitting across the video walls instead of stretching the content from one input. So what did we talk about? Well, originally Spinetics was going to be used as the source. So we wanted to talk to the end user about the benefits of using a Spinetics player behind each display. And you can see in the image on the screen there in the design that there are seven possible screens. We actually increased this to nine by putting one each side eventually. But on that uh, WHI shape there, there are seven possible screens. And the first thing we can talk about really is quality. There's going to be a very low resolution proportional to the total number of pixels in the array if we spread the image across this whole array. That doesn't maximize the investment. Even to a layperson end user, uh, we can talk about future proofing the investment and talking about uh, the type of content people will expect to see, not just now, but years into the future. We also did a bit of uh, basic research into how close people are going to be walking uh, next to and therefore looking at this array it's not something that was going to go on a high up screen very far away in the distance so the stretched resolution would have been visible to the naked eye but another big selling point was the ability to be able to design for the shape of the array using spinetics elementi uh, if we use the spinetics method remember you can use elementi to do multi-screen projects and you can design for the shape natively as we did here. So this looks a slightly different because we have the left and right screens uh, th that were added on. But actually, in Elementi, this took about 45 minutes preparation before the presentation. We designed the actual shape, showing the end user how they could move those images onto place, uh, seeing it in real time. If you design an Elementi project for a video wall just using one player, you don't get that benefit. You just get the 16 by 9 area, meaning that it's very difficult to see exactly where the screen space starts and stops. Also, as part of this design, uh, we animated some of the images of the campus using the built-in animation features uh, in Elementi. This is very easy to do uh, just uh, by animating each layer. We downloaded, of course, a few images from their website. The, one of the reasons for this is that end users really like seeing uh, screens being used separately as well as images being spread over the whole array. It's probably the first time they've seen that because a lot of other video wall systems find this quite difficult to do. The other thing we wanted to do was show them how we could do content with the channel widgets, the widgets in Elementi that pull data from the cloud. So these images and videos you've seen on the screen, some of them are coming from cloud sources like Microsoft OneDrive, and we can talk about the democratization of access to the screen when we talk about this method of content management. So that means instead of having to sit down and make changes every single time there's an update, the end user, with the help of the integrator, can design the framework for the content and then have the content appear depending on what's put into these folders. And you can put all sorts of approvals and permissions on those folders to make sure that that's controlled. This approach is appealing to educational end users in our experience because they don't just have people sitting around all the time who might be able to spend an hour a day or a few hours a week on digital signage or even more. They like the idea that they can uh, uh, externalize the updates and the freshness of content to the student body. One thing we also looked at in advance was how they adopted Office 365, because if they have, they're the most powerful cloud source for these widgets, and they had. It's always worth checking with an end user. First little tip is if you search for the end user's name or brand and then space Office 365 on Google, if you get a portal to their login page on Office 365, then they probably do. Also, we wanted to talk about security. Whenever we talk about cloud access, a lot of our competitors are talking about how you use our cloud, everything's in our cloud, it's fine. But we want to really 
uh, emphasize how with Spinetics, in order to get things from a third-party service like Office 365 or Google or a social network, you're not just putting your username and password in plain text and giving them to Spinetics. It's important to mention because the implementation that some of our competitors do of things like Twitter are done against the terms of service of those providers and also they don't keep usernames and passwords secure. Another thing we talked about with this installation, it's probably worth going back to the uh, wall design is the physical installation. We wanted to talk about how uh, the ADA requirements limit the depth that the screens can protrude from the wall. So alternative hardware would have to be situated behind the screens. That would involve expensive work, recessing cabinets into walls or far away, and then needing to run video runs and have digital video cable drops near the screens, which would have been more cost. Spinetics HMPs fit neatly behind each screen. And they even have two network ports on the HMP 350, so you can daisy chain the players. You don't need to have a local switch, saving you another power drop as well. It's worth talking about the services that the integrator provided and billed for, as well as supplying the hardware and software for this project. And they included two hours of end user training, always something that should appear on your invoice. End users ask for it. And they split that, in this case, into one pre and one post install. And they do that online and they supply the end user with the recordings as a value add. We also recommend some uh, professional services for the template creation for the wall. It's fairly straightforward with basic training in Elementi to create this uh, canvas layout with the screens in the right place. The end user might do that themselves, but offer them the option of doing that for them. And that's usually charged per hour. And then there's the initial setup and connection to the cloud for the widgets. That needs to be done through cockpit and end users like having a hand holding option to do that. Uh, creating a cockpit viewer account for that user, which means that they can look at the status of their players and their licenses. But as the integrator, you also have overall uh, monitoring of what they're doing with the equipment, allowing them, allowing you to keep an eye on the health of it, but also to proactively go back and let them know when software and firmware updates are available. And that was another service offered in this case. It was monitoring that ability with an SLA to respond to anything going wrong with the installation, also done through the cockpit dealer account. Finally, the Elementi updates for two years, the update plan beyond the uh, one year that are included, giving the end user peace of mind that I have the latest for three years, was also added into the uh, product bundle for this. So a really successful project. Uh, uh, leveraging some really unique features in Spinetics, successful upsell, and a good ongoing relationship via selling services. This next project is for Moss Adams. Moss Adams has offices in 27 cities, and they were looking to control multiple signage screens in each location from their headquarters in Seattle. Each location had at least one screen, which was showing company comms information, and their headquarters also had a 4K video wall. Initially, BrightSign was proposed for the wall, but this would have meant two sacrifices. First of all, losing the ability to use Elementi to change the content uh, because Spinetics was being used in the remote locations and on the wall signs. And then the power of the built-in widgets in Elementi wouldn't be possible either. So this project was one based on the consistency of using one system, one security test, one platform, and one partner, the trusted integrator, to support everything. This particular end user was against any recurring costs, maybe because of them being an accounting firm, and the only way to use the competitor for this whole project would have been to use their proprietary cloud service or an alternative CMS, which have introduced yet another party uh, into the project and onto the invoice. So this wasn't a simple option. So you can see this project on the screen, and clearly here what's being leveraged is the flexibility of Elementi to be able to have content really fit the brand. You can see here that there's a transparent uh, map and uh, a content set with fonts over the top of a video. Very difficult to achieve, uh, almost impossible with many of our competitors. And then the weather widgets that are being used aren't the stock weather widgets. They've been designed to fit the brand of this particular um, client. Moss Adams were also beginning to use Yammer, which is part of Office 365. They'd upgraded to Elementi 2018 to get access to the Yammer widget. And of course, they can update the HMP's firmware free of charge. And then they could see Yammer content scrolling uh, along the top of the screen, which was added after this version. Because internally they were encouraging the use of Yammer already, this helped really bring value to the signage initiative as well. Another major factor here was scalability. 
Over time, Moss Adams wanted to bring more sites online by delivering pre-configured players to those sites. Then they could just be plugged in locally without lots of expertise and engagement, uh, and then the screens would come to life. Using LMNTM, they could publish to their internal server, no proprietary software needed, and they know the, the remote player once on the network with a DHCP address would be online immediately. Cockpit, the basic free version, helped them uh, further manage the availability of devices. There are no penalties with Spinetics for upgrading or adding to the system one unit at a time, and that's unlike a lot of CMS providers who often sell connection licenses for the server in blocks of 10 or 20. Along with the software and hardware, there were some services sold by the integrator here as well. The first one was this widget customization. So that's the design of those new icons, the configuration to include those instead of the standard icons. And that was a piece of creative services work. Then there was the training on how to design this content, how to take advantage of the weather widgets, things like the timing and the tempo of the content and a bit of content strategy. For example, how to cascade content, having a master template which serves everything, which does all the screens, but in certain locations and certain offices, just concentrating on the weather for that particular location, for example. And then finally, the firmware testing and upgrades to all the players installed in the field. They were using remote folder deployment, so the integrator here actually keeps the firmware in a remote folder which all the players have access to. Uh, it tests the new firmware when it comes out, places it in that location, and then the players are configured to update and check that location on a 24-hour basis, and they update overnight. Next up, we're going to look at a project uh, for Olympus, the technology manufacturer. Now, I don't have a copy of the exact project uh, here, but I'm going to take you through uh, the widgets that we use to deliver this new functionality. Now, Olympus have an existing Spinetics installation, they're a very long-standing Spinetics user, but it was being underutilized. And with moving to SharePoint, Olympus approached their integrator to see if the new features in Elementi could create some synergies behind their internal comms and their signage that didn't exist today. Presently, the Olympus internal workflow for signage is to save PowerPoint files as JPEGs and then add them to a playlist in Elementi where there, uh, when there are changes. So this process, it functions as an approval mechanism, but it's cumbersome, it's quite inflexible because the person who's using Elementi is also must be the person who's doing the approvals and often those uh, function, those roles are separate. Now they're going to take advantage of the Office 365 connectors and the approvals in an Office 365 service called Microsoft Flow to do this using the tools that they already use. So on the Elementi side, I'm going to show you just using a really simple uh, widget that comes from the media folder here. Um, within media, there's a number of widgets which all do the same thing, but they arrange the content in different ways. And I've used this one called Slideshow. And I'll drag and drop this. And you'll see that I have this configured to go off to my business OneDrive. We use OneDrive for business at Spinetics. And to check a folder called Houston. So I've connected my OneDrive channel folder here already. And when I go to uh, uh, browse the folders, you can see all the folders that I have in my cloud. It looks like the folders I have on my, lo my local machine, but actually that's going and browsing the Office 365 cloud. And in this Houston folder, are all of these images and videos. So that's a standard feature which we've talked about before. But there's something more to this, and that is sitting behind it in the cloud uh, using a tool called Microsoft Flow that's provided as part of Office 365. Now, you get to Microsoft Flow by going to flow.microsoft.com. It takes a bit of setup, but the end user will have this already, and they'll probably have some expertise in-house. Uh, Flow gives you lots of ways of connecting to third-party applications, but this is looking at one that's very specific, which says, uh, when a file is placed in a certain folder, send an email to a particular person or group asking them if they approve this file. If they do, then that file is moved to a second folder. And that folder becomes the source of your media widget in Elementi. Very simple, very easy for the user to understand, and doesn't involve them having to use a directory or a system by Spinetics when they already have this functionality. Now, uh, explaining how Flow works is a bit out of the scope of this, but uh, I'm always happy to have a conversation with you uh, if you want to learn to me to share a bit about what I've learned. But you can see here that it's a drag and drop way of building things. So you start off with the action, which is when a file is created, uh, and then you have the action you want to happen next, which is to start an approval. An approval, uh, a Flow designs and. 
an approval, defines an approval as something that you'd call a workflow. And then it says if the response to an email is yes or no, uh, do this, do the other, move it to another folder saying rejected perhaps and send an email back to the original person saying your uh, uh, image wasn't accepted for this particular reason. So that all happens in the back end and then delivers it to the folder and then that becomes the source for the media widget. The next thing that uh, Olympus wanted to pull was SharePoint lists from the internet. This is also straightforward and elementary because you can use the spreadsheet widget. Over here in widget, widgets, there's a whole set of widgets just called spreadsheets, and you can use any of them, including these six predefined designs or your own designs, to be able to pull data from a SharePoint list. That's very powerful because although many people are using Excel spreadsheets, really full implementations of, of uh, SharePoint, especially those used for intranets, use lists with the data embedded in uh, uh, SharePoint instead. Only Spinetics can pull in that data, do it with any font, including the Olympus proprietary font, which we got from the client, without having to use any code. So we're delivering more to the end user without having to talk to them about customization. And we're keeping the signage on brand and consistent with the look and feel that they would have had from the PowerPoint slides, but with a much smoother user experience. So let's again talk about services that were included with this First of all, there's installing and configuring the new Elementi version, adding the Elementi licenses to Cockpit and connecting all those channels for using Office 365. Uh, in this case, the integrator put about two hours of total on-site time, but build um, as requested. Upgrading from a very early version of Elementi through to the current one can take a lot of explaining with the new features to the end user. And often what happens is they say, ah, we didn't realize that this was also available. We'd like to explore that next. So it's a great opportunity to do some sales and engineering training with your end user. Setting that up that approval in Microsoft Flow is something which requires some understanding of how Microsoft Flow works. And there's plenty of training about that on the Microsoft website. But what you'll probably find in the organization is uh, a technical person who has taken on using Microsoft Flow because they'll be con responsible for running the Office 365 backend already. If you can find that person, all the better. Selling the Elementi three-year update plan with the early bird discount so that the end user knows that uh, for three years down the line they're still going to be getting the latest of all the features, reminding them, of course, that the firmware upgrades to the players are free of charge, so it's great value. And the upgrading of the firmware was also a service which was provided here. Of course, the firmware package is free from Spinetics, but testing that, installing it on the players, making sure that's done out of hours when a time isn't disruptive, uh, are all valuable services that we know end users ask for. So that's it for this session. I wanted to keep it straight and to the point. If you have questions about uh, any anything that you've seen in this session, contact me. My name's George Preston. You can reach me at george.preston at spinetics.com uh, or contact your local sales team in the US. We'd be happy to help you at sales at strongds.com. Thank you.